So I would like to introduce Jennifer Wang from Paradigm. She's the president. She's going to be uh, presenting um, on advanced lymphedema treatment at home on the pneumatic compression pump. So the BC Lymphedema Association is putting on um, monthly presentations. Next month, we have a presentation by Sigveris, but um, uh, that will go up on our website soon. So thank you very much, uh, Jennifer, and um, please start your presentation. Well, thank you, Sandy, for the introduction. Welcome, everyone. We've got a nice group here. Uh, feel free to ask any questions throughout the presentation. Um, you can use, there's a little chat function. You can either use that or just unmute yourself. Um, if uh, I miss your question, uh, Sandy will, uh, she'll uh, be monitoring things. So uh, we'll be sure to, uh, to answer anything um, that you need. Uh, so we will get started. Um, so as Sandy mentioned, I'm the president of Paradigm Medical. Um, we are a national medical products distributor uh, based in Canada. Uh, so here is just a quick little um, intro about myself. And then um, we, in terms of product lines that are uh, most notable to yourself, uh, we carry uh, a line of pneumatic compression pumps. We also have a line of lymphedema shoes and then uh, compression bras too as well. Uh, it's a little picture of our team there. It's not everyone, but um, uh, it gives you an idea <laughs> of um, if you ever call our offices, um, some of the faces uh, that you'll be speaking with. Uh, so here's our contact information. If you ever need to get a hold of us, uh, Mina, Svetlana are our lymphedema experts. Uh, they are always available um, to answer any questions. Uh, we are Canadian owned and operated uh, business and we ship nationwide across Canada. Uh, that's a picture of our warehouse there. Uh, we're based in Toronto. So today, We'll be uh, reviewing a couple topics that I know I get a lot of questions on. So, um, you know, what is a pneumatic compression pump? Um, understanding the technology, you know, the types of garments, the pumps, any contraindications, um, what types of funding uh, is available uh, to patients. Uh, I'll also give you a list of some of the local dealers in BC. And then uh, if there's any Q&A, uh, uh, we could save that for the end too as well. So pneumatic compression therapy, you know, this is a technology that's been around since the 1950s. It's widely adopted globally. Um, it's an evidence-based technology. Uh, this is a recommended form of treatment in the clinical practice guidelines uh, for Wounds Canada uh, and the Society of Vascular Surgery and Venus Form in the U.S. and as well as the Venus um, Society in the U.S. too as well. Um, when we are referring to pneumatic compression therapy, we're referring to, you know, multi-chamber gradient sequential uh, compression pump. These have been proven uh, to be the best approach in um, helping with the uh, reduction of excess lymph fluid um, in the extremities. Um, it also helps to decrease the limb size and improve lymphatic flow. In general, um, Patients are looking at treatment on a daily basis, you know, one to two times a day. You do need to consult with a healthcare uh, professional um, to establish the appropriate treatment program for yourself um, because everybody's a little bit different. However, in general, um, at a very high level, um, most patients are looking at one to two times daily, um, anywhere from 50 to 60 millimeters of mercury in terms of compression. Uh, they're looking at a one hour session. These can be used with or without compression bandages. And the best results are seen after six to 12 weeks of therapy. So this is not something that you're gonna see a dramatic difference after the first treatment. Um, it is something that you will notice um, the best results you know, in that six to 12 week period. 
so research, a um, lot of questions about, you know, the efficacy of this, um, of this technology. Um, a very popular study that we common refer to reference is um, done by um, Dr. Subas and Dr. Um, Alkalu and Roxen in, in 2002. This is a randomized control um, study. Uh, this here, he's comparing, or they are comparing, um, the efficacy of um, the intermittent pneumatic compression pumps, or IPC, um, on uh, patients uh, who've undergone um, breast cancer treatment, uh, so breast cancer-related lymphedema. Um, they did two studies. They did one where it was just an outpatient program. And there they compared um, 30 minutes of MLD uh, with uh, 30 minutes of pumping plus bandaging um, in that scenario versus just one hour of manual lymph drainage and bandaging. In that scenario, they saw a 45% reduction in um, the limb size in, in the edema reduction um, with the use of the pumping in addition to the MLD and only a 26% uh, decrease in um, the limb size with just um, MLD alone and bandaging. Um, what was even more interesting is when they ran a home maintenance program and I, excuse me for the spelling mistake there. I just noticed that um, they actually saw a 89% um, decrease in um, edema versus actually an increase um, in um, the edema if the patient was just required to do um, the MLD, self MLD and bandaging. So as you can see, um, you know, this is a very, very effective form of treatment. Um, you know, the studies concluding that it's a very important, uh, both in acute treatment and the maintenance of lymphedema. Uh, the results show that combined with pumping, MLD um, and pumping improves the results. Um, this potentially is the only treatment option uh, for patients with lymphedema in some very rural areas or in certain provinces. Um, where there just aren't a lot of healthcare professionals that specialize in this field. Uh, treatment is very well tolerated by patients, um, very rare that they see any adverse um, uh, reaction uh, to the pump. Uh, you know, in, in this specific study, there was no report of any um, adverse uh, reaction. Um, it's a very safe and effective for at-home use. So another question that we commonly get is, you know, how do we know that, you know, when pumping is occurring that the lymph um, fluid is actually moving? Uh, so here's a study done back in um, 2017 uh, by Aldrich, where um, they did uh, near infrared imaging of the lymphatics following uh, ICG injection. So as you can see, um, before, uh, you know, before pumping and after pumping. Um, the image on your right-hand side, you'll see there's a lot of um, uh, lymph uh, flowing um, after pumping. So here's a very, very long list of all the research um, studies that demonstrate that pneumatic compression um, therapy is effective. Um, I'm not going to go through all of it, um, but if you do require or interested in any of these studies, please let me know and I can always send you a copy. This is really just to demonstrate that this is a very much an evidence-based technology. There's been a lot of research and studies um, uh, done on, on the effectiveness um, and uh, it's, it's available. So on to um, the, the, uh, the, the device itself. Uh, so the, the major manufacturer um, and the only approved system um, by Health Canada is biocompression system. This is the only pump that is widely distributed um, throughout North America and Canada. Uh, they've been manufacturing this equipment for well over 30 years. You know, the technology is widely adopted. It's sold all around the world. Um, they're very innovative in terms of 
resolving a lot of historical issues with pumps, uh, for example, backflow, trunk edema, uneven compression. So they're constantly updating their, um, their, their products uh, to be able to resolve any of these issues. Uh, just a warning I'd like to uh, put out there for everyone because I get this question a lot. Um, these products are all class two medical devices. A prescription is required um, in order to purchase one of these products. Um, they are heavily regulated by Health Canada to ensure you know, that the patients are, the products are you know, of the highest quality standards, they're effective and they're safe. You know, purchasing a pump online or out of the country is not recommended. Uh, because these products should always be used under the supervision and direction of a healthcare professional. Um, it's important that you're properly fitted for these garments and devices. Um, the right pump is selected for you and that you are trained on it so that you know how to use it appropriately. Um, not doing this might put your own health at risk. So you do not want to go down that path. Um, in addition, there are many non-medical pumps which are marketed for the treatment of edema. You know, you'll see these in spas um, and uh, marketed as, you know, sort of wellness products. Uh, these are not recommended for the use for the treatment of edema and may, you know, um, uh, cause your condition to get worse because they're not designed um, for treating uh, lymphedema. They're designed more for cosmetic purposes and for, you know, massage and for uses in spas. So the biocompression system, it is a gradient sequential non-peristaltic multi-chamber pump. What does all that mean? <laughs> so effectively, these are the, the characteristics of the pump and the garments, which are proven to be best at reducing excess lymph fluid. So these garments come in anywhere from four to 16 chamber sleeves. All patients must be trained um, by the fitter um, on how to use them. Uh, as I mentioned before, a prescription is required and patients are looking at typically a one to two hour daily treatment. How does it work? So just very simplistically, you know, in a healthy lymphatic system, the body will use various muscle groups. Their body's using your muscle system to um, move the lymphatic fluid through the various channels. So in a similar manner, the bowel compression system will pneumatically stimulate and mimic the body's natural muscle pump function. Now, how does this actually work? So I'm gonna show you a quick video here. As you can see, the pumping always occurs from the distal to proximal. So the furthest from uh, your body, and it just pumps one chamber at a time. This is an eight chamber pump. It'll pump all through the chambers and then it'll release and then it'll start again from chamber one. And if it's in the, um, in the arm, and this is a four chamber, similarly, same idea, same concept, just less chambers in the garment. Okay. Um, so there's three models that are available here in Canada. We have the uh, 2004 OC and the 2008 OC. So the difference between those two is the 2004 is a four chamber, the 2008 is an eight chamber. Um, those two models are actually getting updated. There'll be new features that are coming in the summer of this year in 2022. So that's very exciting. Um, for those of you who like a digital programmable, um, who may require that, um, if you're looking for something that allows you to adjust the pressure in each individual chamber, um, there's some other special features that are available in that pump. You'll look, be looking at the 3008. So the 2004, it's a, we call it like, the, it's a very basic model. It's very good, very effective. It's a workhorse. Um, this is the most economical model in terms of um, pricing. Um, it 
has uh, four to eight chambers, depending upon um, the garment that you're looking at. Um, it's the lightest weight pump. It's less than five pounds. It's very simple to operate. You see that red on and off button there. You literally just turn that on and off. And then here's the dial, which allows you to change the compression level. It's got 90 second cycle time. So that's the time it takes to run through one cycle of compression. Um, it ranges from, you can set it between 20 to 80 millimeter, excuse me, millimeters of mercury in terms of the pressure. It's got a three year warranty. You can use it unilaterally or bilaterally, laterally, meaning you can use either one um, limb or you can use it for two. And what that means is you can use one or two sleeves with that. So the 2008, um, this is a little bit better of a model. It's more efficient because it has more uh, chambers. Uh, has a faster cycle time. So you've got a 60 second cycle time, which means you can run twice the amount of compression per session. Uh, similar pressure range. It's a little bit heavier. Uh, there's some more garment options, like if you need a pant or um, for those mastectomy patients who need um, mastectomy vests, um, you'll need a 2008 or at least an eight chamber pump. Uh, similar three-year warranty, um, you can use it either on a unilateral or bilateral operation. So the best model, the most efficient is the 3008. Um, you can use it for eight to 16 chambers. Um, similar cycle time, we're looking at 60 seconds um, to the 2008. This has the largest pressure range, so it goes all the way up to about 120 millimeters of mercury. So this is the strongest pump. You've got uh, various different modes and functions that um, you know some therapist or uh, patients might require or, or prefer. You've got a pre-therapy mode. You have a timer on here, a compliance meter. Um, you're able to adjust the pressure in each garment, or sorry, in each chamber individually. So for some people who have sensitivities in certain areas and they can't have compression or need to dial down the compression in that area, you'll be able to do that with this uh, pump. Um, it's compatible with all eight to 16 chamber garments, um, three year warranty, similar unilateral bilateral operation. And uh, this is the best pump for clinical use uh, because it gives you the widest range of options. Um, and then for patients who have uh, more advanced stages of lymphedema. So the clinical benefits of uh, the bowel compression system, you know, it's a very proven uh, to be safe for the use of patients at home or in the clinic. It shows that it reduces edema. It helps to improve fibrosis and helps to soften the tissue. Um, combined with MLD and CDT, um, we see improved results. Uh, it's proven to reduce the progression of lymphedema. Uh, for uh, patients who have venous ulcers, excuse me, ulcers, <laughs> um, this has shown to improve the healing. Uh, very high levels of patient compliance, um, and it helps you know patients restore their confidence and their morale, and they feel like they can really control uh, their condition. Uh, prolonged use reduces the risk of any ulcer occurrences. As we mentioned before, adverse results are very rare if it's used correctly. And that's why it's important for patients to be A, fitted properly um, and trained to use the product. Um, you know, helps to reduce pain, um, promotes lymphatic uh, flow. I'm just gonna, uh, for those of you who have restless leg syndrome, it also helps to relieve that. It's beneficial for all stages of lymphedema and um, it's covered by most uh, private insurance uh, companies and then some health, uh, provincial healthcare plans. So garments, this is the importance of fit. There are over 55 different garments. These are all the over-the-counter kind of sizes. Um, you've got, you know, arm, leg, pant, arm with shoulder, arm with chest, you know, vest. Um, custom size garments are also available. Uh, we do have some pediatric um, patients or some um, patients who are 
you know, the, the extra large size just doesn't fit and they need custom garments, a custom sized garment. So these are also available. So selecting the right garment, um, you wanna make sure that the garment, uh, the number of chambers in the garment matches the number, uh, the, the, the pump that you're using. So that's, that's important. Um, so these garments uh, that BioCompression designs are very um, thin profile. So they're really easy to put on and off. Uh, which helps with um, patient compliance. So it's really, really important when you're getting fitted for your garment that the garment must cover the entire affected area. So this doesn't result in fluid pooling or collecting in you know, one of the ends of the extremity. Another important point to know is that if you have any type of lymphatic um, uh, uh, system where like the trunk is damaged um, and needs treatment as well, it's important that you're using a full pant or a, uh, a full uh, chest vest. Because once again, you don't want any of the edema to pool in the effective area. You wanna make sure that it's completely getting treatment so that it actually can flush through. You know, mastectomy uh, garments are also available. Um, these um, garments are designed with a, uh, a, a, like an extra special chamber located uh, directly at the axilla area. So there's actually pumping taking place there. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to go into depth in terms of how to fit the garment, but two important points are Length is very important. The garment must always cover the entire hand. You don't want any digits hanging out. It's got to cover the entire length of the extremity. And then the other point is, it's always better to err on the side of a larger circumference because the technology will always fit um, to you know, the, uh, the, um, the leg or the arm. Um, you don't ever want the garment to be too small. So there are some demo videos that are available if you're interested um, that can be found on BioCompression's uh, website, which take you through how to, you know, unbox the product, how to plug it in, how to set it up. Um, and it'll take you step by step through that. So if you ever, um, you know, want some additional information for yourself, those are all available on their website. So other questions that we commonly um, at, get asked, um, you know, can uh, you, you um, use the, uh, the pump over bandages? And the answer is yes. You can use it over bandages, you know, compression garments, um, any type of stockinettes that you're using. Uh, but it's important to note that after pumping, you always want to make sure that you clean the leg or the arm and use, you know, lotion um, so that um, you uh, have proper skin hygiene. Um, and then if any of the bandages uh, or wound dressing has been um, uh, loosened due to the pumping, just to redo that afterwards and what to wear during a, a session, um, preferably something very lightweight, loose fitting, um, you know, nothing that's too constricting or nothing with studs or anything on it, cause that'll just irritate um, with, uh, with the pumping. So general guidelines, um, if you have an infection, um, don't pump. Uh, you want to make sure that you're on antibiotics for at least 72 hours prior to pump therapy. And the reason for this is if you have an infection, any kind of infection, you do not want to actively pump it around the body. Um, you'll cause it to move through the, the, the lymphatic system. So you don't want us to cause any spread. Uh, so it's important that you see your physician if you have any type of infection and get on antibiotics. 
And um, once it's been administered for more than 72 hours, then it's fine to continue. If you have any pain or cramping, for example, discontinue pumping immediately and contact your physician. Uh, if you have any venous ulcers or open wounds, it's fine um, to be pumping. Um, obviously have uh, bandages uh, around that. Um, as long as there's no sign of any untreated infection or cellulitis or things of that sort, then it's fine. It'll actually help to uh, speed the recovery. So if you have congestive heart failure, if it's uncontrolled, um, then you do not want to be pumping at that time. If it's controlled, um, then it's fine to pump. Um, in general, uh, most um, health practitioners recommend, you know, 40 millimeter degrees of mercury a day. Um, sitting in a reclined position, you never want to lay flat. Um, and then if you have any types of shortness of breath, uh, you want to contact your physician. Um, active cancer, so in palliative care situations, uh, there's the debate about whether you want to have quality of life or quantity of life. Um, if you're looking for quality of life, then yes, it can be used with palliative care. Um, uh, we're looking one hour daily, 40 to 60 uh, millimeters of mercury, uh, depending on how the patient can tolerate it. So if you have an active DVT, you're not an appropriate candidate. You do not want to be pumping at that time. If the DVT has been resolved, then yes, you're fine um, to, uh, to use uh, the pneumatic compression pump. Um, DVTs are often um, uh, prevented with the use of uh, the compression therapy. As such, um, you know, I'm giving you all these general high level guidelines. Uh, it's very important to work with your healthcare um, professional um, to establish whether or not this uh, pump is appropriate for yourself, uh, given your health condition. So here's just a list of contraindications. As I mentioned before, any type of you know, blockages, um, infections, um, uh, you know, like blood clotting, cellulitis, um, these things, we do not want to be pumping at that time. Um, so it's very important to make sure that, um, you know, these are vetted by your healthcare practitioner before um, one of these devices is, is prescribed to you. Other little tips that um, might be helpful if you wanted to clean the garments, um, Generally, people are using, you know, um, a solution, a bleach solution, assuming you don't have an allergy to bleach, uh, one part bleach, 10 part water, just put it in a spray bottle. Uh, you always want to wear loose fitting clothing, comfortable loose fitting clothing while, um, while you're uh, um, uh, getting a pumping treatment. Um, you don't want to be bare legged or armed in, in, the, uh, in the garment. And then something to note is that the chamber should always inflate distal to proximal. If they're inflating in the wrong direction, you may have uh, plugged the hose bundles in incorrectly. So you just want to be mindful of that when you set it up initially. And um, another fitting tip is that the body is not symmetrical. So you want to make sure you're taking measurements for each limb that you need to get fitted for because they might not be the same size. So in conclusion, um, you know, pneumatic compression therapy, you know, it's very much essential for the long-term care of primary, secondary lymphedema patients. It helps to improve quality of life. Um, you know, a lot of um, patients find it provides them independence. They can use it at home. They can get daily treatment even while they're traveling. Um, very, very high levels of compliance. Uh, once patients establish, you know, that routine of doing it, you know, daily, and it's very safe and effective. So funding or coverage for patients. Uh, I don't believe in BC there's any provincial um, health coverage. However, if you do live in Saskatchewan or um, in Ontario through the SAIL program or ADP program, there is uh, government funding. Um, many uh, private health insurance plans will cover it. For example, Sun Life or Great West, 
Um, it's um, categorized as an extremity pump for the treatment of lymphedema, and um, it does require a letter of medical necessity. There are some local charities that provide um, support. Um, it is as a medical device, a class two medical device. This can be used as an income tax deduction on your tax return. Um, it's also a zero rated medical device, which means that with a prescription, there um, is no sales tax. So for access to any of the above um, uh, funding, uh, prescription is required. So here's just a list of some of the local dealers uh, in British Columbia, uh, depending upon you know, where you're located. All of them have uh, received vigorous training from Paradigm Medical on the products and have um, a fitter certificate. Any questions? Thank you very much, Jennifer. Um, this has been great, very informative for me. Um, I like that uh, the treatment options could be available for people in some rural areas. Um, so when you say they need to be followed by a medical professional, um, do you have some examples of what people in the rural areas are doing? Because I know we have a hard time getting people that would prescribe things, doctors, as well as manual lymph drainage therapists. Um, so you're saying that there, so you, you need a prescription. Um, is it the follow-up treatment that you're saying people are having difficult? Like if you live in rural areas, like we have a lot of um, patients in Saskatchewan, uh, they live very far away. They might see their therapist depending upon their condition you know, it, it, and it varies, right? It depends on, um, you know, initially they might see them, you know, once every quarter, uh, they might see them once a year, that's going forward once their condition is kind of stabilized. Uh, for that, it, um, that's the beauty of having the pump is that you're able to uh, take more control of your treatment um, at home on a daily basis as opposed to having to, I know some areas, it's virtually impossible for a patient to, on a weekly basis, um, go see their manual lymph uh, drainage therapist um, and get treatment done. Uh, so this allows them to A, work with their, their, um, their therapist, but also on a daily basis, be able to get the treatment done um, and so that their condition doesn't worsen. Okay. Thank does you. that answer your question or? Yes, it does. Okay. Um, like, so for example, locally, if you went to um, B BC Medicap, um, you would still need the doctor to say you need this pump. And then um, Patricia at BC Medicap would help you um, measure and make sure that you get fitted for the right uh, pump. Is that yes. Yeah, and then the doctor um, would generally uh, might give some guidance in terms of, you know, the compression level uh, that um, the patient, um, you know, would be recommended uh, to start with, and then they would kind of monitor the patient on a, you know, okay. on a regular basis. Yeah, and it depends. Like it might be, um, you know, once a year. It might be twice a year. It might be quarterly. It really depends upon the patient's con condition. Okay, great. We have a couple of questions in the chat. Um, one of them is just, do you have to purchase the pump or are there places that we can rent them around the province? I know of, I've been to um, McDonald Pharmacy and used their arm one there. And I've heard that if you're a breast cancer patient in Kelowna, they have pumps that they use there. But do you know of any other places? I do not off the top of my head. I do... I'm not sure if the, um, the hospitals, I know that the Queen uh, Jubilee Hospital has um, a pump there. I don't know if they will um, rent it out to patients or, um, but there, some of the hospitals do uh, rent out the pumps um, and uh, some of the, yeah, the dealers, not all of them do. You'd have to contact them uh, okay. specifically to see whether or not they, they have a program there. Thank you. Um, the next question is, um, or comment, um, I have primary lymphedema in my legs under control. Now I have lymphedema in one arm. 
because of cancer, can I still use a pump? Uh, yes. I, I, I'm assuming you have none of the other contraindications <laughs> that we, we spoke about, but if we're just talking, you know, lymphedema in the leg and lymphedema in the arm, yes, you can. Mm -hmm. So if everybody wants to unmute, feel free to ask any other yeah, yeah. questions. Um, Hello. Hello. Hi, I've got a question regarding Vancouver Island. Do you have any connections here on Vancouver Island? Uh, so here's the, the list of the dealers. Um, so in Victoria, uh, there's two there, um, the Royal Jubilee Hospital and um, Jenna LaFlesh. Okay, I'm going to take a quick picture of that. Yeah, okay, great. That's Jenna, good. I Jenna, understand. Sorry, go ahead. I understand there's a lady in Parksville that's superb with measuring and helping with, with fittings and doing stuff for people who have problems. So. I, I have to find out her name and, uh, and I understand she's very good. So I will maybe talk to her for measuring for something like this for myself. So um, in the chat, someone's put Jody at Parksville Pharmasave. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. So I don't know that she's trained. She's not on the list for pumps, but she's a the best fitter on the upper island as Kathleen's put it in the chat for us. At least, at least it's a start. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, and then, you know, maybe we can also connect her with um, Jennifer Wang from Paradigm and just, or not, yeah. Yeah, um, so all know. the fitters um, for pump, fitters for pump, not for, uh, for necessarily compression garments, um, do need to, undergo um, uh, pneumatic compression certificate training program uh, in order for them to, you know, be um, eligible to, um, to distribute the, the pump, but also as well to, to fit patients. Okay, great. Um, Jen's got a question. I think you have to unmute, unmute first. Yeah, go ahead. Hey, um, I was just wondering if you wear compression bandages or garments underneath, like while pumping, would you use a lower um, level of mercury, lower level of compression on the pump? Uh, it'd be I, the same. Oh, she's st like, so still 50 to 60. Yeah. So okay. depending on your condition, um, it, uh, you know, generally most people start in the 50 to 60 range, uh, depending on your condition and you might um, need to go higher. Um, or for people who are just very sensitive, like we found people, especially when you're using the, uh, the chest garments, just people aren't comfortable having, um, compression in their chest. So, or just not, uh, used to it initially. So we generally start them a little bit lower and then as they get more comfortable with it, then we can, we can raise the compression levels. So there, there's, there's a bit of tweaking depending upon your individual sort of circumstances. Okay. Is, you know, is there an advantage to wearing bandages or compression garments versus like just regular loose fitting clothing? Um, there hasn't been any research um, to say that like the bandaging, like while you're, while you're doing the, um, uh, the pumping, it's just really for simplicity. Like most people, if you have your bandage, like they're not going to want to necessarily take it off. Right. Um, they just, you know, feel comfortable with it on and, and, and just doing the pumping um, with it on. So there hasn't demonstrated one or the other. There's no sort of research. Okay. Um, I had one more question. I was just wondering, um, do you know um, why in Canada there's only one brand of pump that Health Canada has approved? Uh, yes. Um, and sorry, just to further um, clarify. So the bandaging, you always want to make sure that you put the bandaging back on after pumping and it, bandaging or any compression garments need to be worn after pumping. Right, if, right. Yes, yeah, okay, yeah. But during there is no sort of, um, there's no sort of research as to whether it uh, makes it more effective or not, if you have okay. the bandage on or not. Um, and, and to your question about why there's only one uh, manufacturer that has been approved, um, there used to be two, so, um, 
There used to be a brand called Lympha Press, which I know some people still have uh, old devices. Um, and, um, and then biocompression is the one that we, we spoke about today. Um, however, Health Canada a couple of years ago changed their um, certification process. Um, they, it's called a MDSAP certification, and it's a much more um, vigorous uh, requirement in order for class two medical devices to be approved for sale. Um, here in Canada. And um, so the only um, manufacturer that received that certification um, and approval by Health Canada was bowel compression system. So they're the only ones at this time um, that are approved for sale here in Canada. Okay. Thank you. Jennifer, can you talk a little bit about the Limpa Press? Because I know that is the one that we have for the arm. Um, and just in the States, um, there are people using this, right? It's still mm -hmm. recommended in... In the US, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. The, the only thing is like in Canada, like if you're caught with the device, like if you're traveling back and forth, if you're caught with the device, like it will be confiscated because it's not an approved medical device here in Canada. Um, so just be mindful about that. Um, the technology is very, very similar to the biocompression system technology. Um, I'm not sure exactly what pump that you have and what garment that you have. So I can't sort of talk specifically about it. Uh, but you know, we, we used to distribute both of them. Uh, they're both uh, very similar in terms of the technology. Um, bowel compression is a little bit better in terms of the garments. There's more garments that are available. Um, the um, um, with some of the lymphopress, there was issues where there were areas where, just because of the way that the garments were divine, designed, um, some parts of the garments had areas where there just there was uneven compression, um, and uh, you don't find that uh, with the biocompression garments. Thank you. But very very similar technology. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a comment here regarding lotion. Make sure your compression garments are compatible with lotion. They should not contain any natural rubber, rubber as the elastomer only lycra or man-made. So that's just in addition to what you're saying about. Yeah, in general, anyone with lymphedema um, will have you know skin sensitivities and, and be more prone to infections. So it's really important to have good um, hygiene um, with this in um, you know with your skin and with your um, just additional sensitivities. And then it's important to stay moisturized. But yes, and be mindful that some of the uh, ingredients might uh, cause uh, additional. Uh, or um, I guess deterioration of the, uh, the elasticity in the garment. Thank you. I have no more questions in the chat. Does anybody else wanna ask a question before we wrap up here? Yes, I'd like to know what a pump costs. Uh, so it varies uh, in terms of the retail pricing. Um, on the low end, um, I'm just gonna talk on the low end just cause the high end can go quite, much higher depending upon um, you know the number of garments that you need and the uh, the type of pump that you need but if you're looking just at like a very basic four chamber pump um, and one sleeve you're looking at the retail price of about around you know three thousand dollars Canadian thank you thank you any other questions We, um, I have the contact information for Jennifer if any more questions come up afterwards. But thank you very much for this presentation. It was very informative. Um, I've learned a lot about compression pumps and um, what to look out for and how to use them. So I'm, I'm going to stop the recording now as well.